Hi everyone. Uh, in this session, we will discuss about recovery from deadlock. Okay. So when the deadlock detection algorithms define that a deadlock has occurred, so there are different or uh, there are various uh, varieties to work on the deadlock. Okay. We will discuss uh, some of them. So one possibility to avoid or uh, to work on deadlock is. To deal with the deadlock manual, okay. So we are discussing about uh, recovery from deadlock. Suppose by using detection detection algorithms, if you have determined that a deadlock has occurred, we can work on that by using uh, different uh, uh, different alternatives for available. Out of which the first one is so inform the operator inform the operator to deal with the deadlock manual. Okay, so here the operator will be required to deal with the deadlock manually. Thereby, manually he will check and he will work on the deadlock. He will identify where the deadlock has occurred and he will uh, stop the process of a particular process or he will preempt a particular uh, process or uh, resource on and he will avoid the deadlock. That is one way. And the second possibility is let the system recover by itself. Let the system recover automatically by itself. That is another possibility. So here what the author has specified is so the deadlock can be we can work on deadlock by different varieties. There are nothing but one thing is we will request the operator to deal with the deadlock manually. That is one thing. Second one is let the system let the system recover from the deadlock automatically by itself. That is second way. Okay, there are two other options. Okay, two other operations were there to break the deadlock. They are nothing but simply about simply about one or more processes to break the circular weight. And the second one is preempt preempt some resources from one or more deadlocked processes. We will see these two in detail. So coming to the first one, about about all deadlocked processes means. So, what are the processes were involved in attaining deadlock? You remove or about means remove or delete all those uh, processes which leads to deadlock. So, at the time, what happens is so. So, what are the process? What are the processes which were involved in attaining deadlock? If you about all those uh, processes, what will happen is it will lead to great expensive. That procedure itself, that method itself is very expensive. Okay, and it's time taking process. Okay, so uh, the deadlock, what are the processes which have deadlock? They might have been executing for the long time. Okay, suppose if a process P1, let us suppose P1, P2, these two processes were involved in attaining deadlock. Okay, so let us suppose this has been executed for the last last 60 minutes this has been executed for the last 45 minutes so if you about these two processes what will happen is so again again these two has to start their execution from zero onwards it's a time taking process as well as it's a time waste as well as money waste because the it, it is very expensive method or expensive process right so that's what the author is telling. So the result of these partial computations may be discarded. Okay, and they can be executed later. But it's a time taking process. Okay, if you follow this. About all deadlock process means so we'll uh, stop or remove all the process which were which leads to deadlock. So if you remove no, it's an expensive as well as it's a time taking process. Coming to the second one. About one process, about one process at a time until the deadlock cycle is eliminated. Until the deadlock cycle is eliminated. So, here also, what we have to do is aborting a process may not be easy. Why? Because we have to identify which process to abort. Suppose in a, in a class, if there are uh, 60 students, okay. If one fellow is doing some uh, nonsense in the class or mischievous thing in the class, 
it is difficult to identify the exact one person. We can identify the group of people who are sitting at the last or who are sitting at the corner might have done that, that uh, vicious thing. But among the group of people, who is the exact person who has done that uh, uncivilized activity, we have to identify. Okay, that's not an easy thing. Similarly, here also, what the author is telling is, adopting a process may not be easy. Identifying a particular process is not an easy. If you identify also, that process may be busy in executing some other process. For example, if that process is updating a file, if that process, suppose, you have identified that P1 is the process which is which is performing uh, a cycle which leads to deadlock. Okay, if you remove this uh, process P1, thereby we can avoid this circular weight or we can avoid this uh, cycle. Okay, and thereby we can avoid deadlock. Suppose if you identify P1, where P1 is updating a file, it is updating a file. Okay, which has which has been uh, done for the past few seconds or few minutes. Suppose in this situation, if we terminate this process, what happens is this updating will be stopped. Okay, and it may lead to an error or incorrect state. Similarly, if a process, if another process, we have identified this process is also uh, formed a cycle which leads to deadlock state. In that situation, we are supposed to eliminate this process. So, this process P2 might be printing something, okay. So, here if we stop now, this entire process will be disturbed, okay. So, like that, there are some difficulties in identifying the process uh, which leads to deadlock and uh, identifying itself is different and once if we identify also, if we terminate or if we abort that process, it may lead to some other disadvantages. That's what uh, exactly the author is trying to say, okay? So, in partial, in partial termination method, in partial termination method, okay? So, uh, we must determine which deadlock process should be terminated. We have discussed. So, out of which, so, identifying a particular process which leads to deadlock, identifying is difficult. So, for that, we have to, uh, we have to identify that and then that process should be terminated. So, in identifying that, in determining that, it's a decision making. It is similar to CPU scheduling. In CPU scheduling, what we have done? So, for example, uh, in CPU scheduling, what we have done? Suppose, so the process uh, suppose if there are some set of process, okay, suppose if there is no enough space, what we have done by using some uh, CPU scheduling algorithms like uh, like uh, least common, least recently used, okay, or FCFS, first come first serve, okay, uh, like that, or uh, round robin scheduling algorithm, by using some CPU scheduling algorithms, we have taken the decision, like that also we have to identify Okay, for identifying that, we have some certain uh, conditions for that, certain rules for that. We have to take into consideration of certain factors. Based upon those factors, we have to identify which which process which process is to be aborted. Okay, so so we have to consider. We have to keep in mind that minimum cost. We have to identify a process whose termination leads to minimum 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 cost okay uh, the exp it should not be an expensive process okay right for example if there are uh, different process p1 p2 p3 p4 let us suppose these four if we eliminate any one of these three uh, any one of these four process then the deadlock will will not occur if we eliminate any one of these process let us suppose we have four processes, P1, P2, P3, P4. If we eliminate any one of these four processes, then we can remove deadlock, let us suppose. In that situation, we have to consider the process which is less expensive. If we remove P1, if it leads to more expensive, then we have to leave P1. Okay, A P2, if we remove P2, it is also leads to uh, wastage of more expensive. Okay, then we have to, suppose if we have spent very less amount for P3, then in that situation, we have to identify a process 
for which we have uh, used less amount. So for based upon that, no, we can eliminate that process P3, right? Right? Okay. So here, uh, what the is telling is there are many factors which may affect uh, the process chosen. I mean, for choosing a particular process. So here, in order to eliminate or in order to adopt a particular process, so there are different factors. Okay, there are different factors to identify a particular uh, process which is to be aborted. The first one is, what is the priority of the process? We have to identify. So, if there are, let us suppose if there are four, four processes, P1, P2, P3, P4. Okay, we have to identify the priorities which is having highest priority. That process should not be aborted. The process which is having least priority can be aborted. Okay. Then, how long the process has computed and how much longer the process will compute before completing its designated task. Means, so uh, out of the available processes, how long that particular process is executed. The process which is executed for long time and which requires, still which requires very less amount of time for completing its task, that particular process we should not abort it. We should abort a process which has completed very less task and which was recently started its execution and which has to, which will take more amount of time for completing its uh, uh, the desired task or designated task. That particular process we have to focus. Okay. That is regarding the second one. Coming to the third one, how many and what type of resources the process has used? Whether it has used uh, the resources which are simple to preempt or not. Based upon that also we have to identify and we have to pick the process which, I, which is to be aborted. Next, coming to the fourth one, how many more resources the process needs in order to complete? Still, how many more resources a particular process requires? Suppose if a process requires uh, just one or one resources to complete its task, no, that process we should not abort. We should abort the process which requires more number of resources, which requires more number of resources still to complete uh, its task, that process we can focus on. Okay. Next one is how many processes will need to be terminated. We have to identify how many processes are uh, required to terminate in order to avoid the circular cure, circular weight. Okay, right? In a, or in order to form the cycle. Okay, how many processes are to be terminated in order to avoid the cycle? We have to avoid the cycle. If there is no cycle, if there is cycle, it leads to Deadlock. Okay. No cycle. No deadlock. Okay. No cycle. No deadlock. Okay. Then the last one. Whether the process is interactive process or batch process. Based upon that also we have to identify. Okay. By considering or by keeping in view of all these factors, we have to identify a process which is to be terminated. Next, what the author is telling is uh, to eliminate deadlock using resource preemption. Okay, so uh, here uh, the deadlock has uh, three issues to be addressed. The first one is selecting a victim, S selecting a victim, rollback, and starvation. These are the three issues that need to be addressed uh, while we are performing preemption. Okay, uh, to deal with the deadlock. So we will discuss those in detail. Selecting a victim. Selecting a victim means nothing but so which resource and which process. Selecting a victim means we have to identify which resource from which process are to be preempted. Preempted means we have already discussed. Preempted means for example, if there is a process P1, suppose if a resource R1, resource R1 is being held by so means resource R1 is being held by process P1. Suppose if another process P2, 
So now process P2 is requesting for resource R1. Whereas resource R1 is holding by process P1. So in this situation, this process P2 is waiting for R1. So if you want to preempt you, preempt you means if you perform preempt you. If we remove this resource R1 from this P1, then that is preempt you. Okay, before the completion of the execution of process P1, if we remove a resource from that particular process, that we call it as preemption. So here what the arm is telling is, which resources uh, is to be preempted from which process. Okay, and we must also determine the order of preemption in order to minimize the cost. We have to identify. If you follow a particular order in uh, preemption, so it should lead to uh, less, less cost. Okay, based upon these factors, we have to identify the victim. Victim means what are the resources uh, from where we have to remove from which process. Which resources from which process we have to remove, right? That is selecting a victim. Come to the second one, rollback. Rollback is nothing but, suppose if we preempt a resource from a process, see, P1, R1. So if we preempt a resource from, from a process, what should be done with that process? So if we take this process, see, since uh, P2 has requested this resource uh, R1, what we have done is, we have removed this resource from this process. So now what will happen? Process P2, resource R1. So now, P2 is holding resource R1. Hope you are following. Initially, R1 is being held by process P1. P2 is requesting for resource R1. Now what we have done is, we have preempted the resource from this process. So now, resource R1 is being held by process P2. And what this process P1 has to do, that's what the other is telling. Okay. And it cannot continue with, with its normal execution. Okay. Um, why? Because it is missing these uh, resources. It is missing this resource. Okay. It, because it has not completed the execution of our usage of these resources. Okay. So, in that situation, what we have to do is we must roll back the process. We must roll back this process to some safe state. We must roll back this process to some safe, uh, safe state and we have to restart it from that state. Okay. So that is a roll back. Okay. Next one is starvation. So how do we ensure that starvation will not occur? Why? Because we should not remove the resources from the same process again and again. For example, in the example we have discussed now, suppose the process P1 is holding a resource R, R1. Suppose if P2 is requesting R1, suppose if we preempt this resource, okay, so now what happens? So P2, P2 is holding resource R1, whereas P1 is empty. Suppose if P1 is allocated with some other resource R2, again after some time again we should not remove uh, this resource R2 from this P1. If it happens, no. See, uh, so we should not take the resources from the same process. We should not preempt, we should not perform preemptive operation or we should not take out or uh, we should not remove this uh, resource from this uh, process again and again. The same process should not be uh, preempted again and again. So by doing this we can avoid the starvation. Okay. So this is something about our So this is something about our uh, debt of recovery. Okay. With this uh, we will wind up our session. Okay. Thank you.